Oh my. It's been crazy up to this point. Writing code, div tags, elements, document types, all these different things that make up a web page. Confused by where, which attribute goes, and what attribute to use, and how to use it, and where to be. So, lucky number 13. Most people would expect that it will get harder from this point, but actually, at this point, we're going to start to go down the hill. We're going to fall forward. We're going to take all these little things that we learned, and we're going to start to discuss them and really understand how they impact us. The remaining lessons will involve a lot of copy and paste of pages and your grade will be dependent on personalizing the content. Meaning if there's a div that's supposed to have information in it or something like that, you will complete the project by placing your personal information, your personal touch to that code. While we discuss that code, why is it important for us to um, discuss the code? Well, uh, whether you're going to be a developer or a business person or whatever it is that you may choose to be in life when you grow up, I'm still trying to figure that one out myself. The fact is, in corporate America today, and even small to mid-sized businesses, application development is a huge part of every organization's success. When organizations choose to increase efficiencies or become better at what they do or connect with their clients or uh, anything of that nature, it always involves some type of integration or development of a web application. This becomes more and more true as we move forward, understanding that websites work on any computer as long as they have a browser. It takes away multiple uh, development activities. It really is the most efficient way to go. In addition, almost every organization has a website with that website, there is a certain value add that that website has to the organization. And from the CFO to the CEO to the CIO to the director of any practice area, having knowledge of understanding what it takes to make a website happen or having the ability to identify when you're being put in a position where there's nothing but smoke and mirrors, having this knowledge is, is crucial to the future of any business professional. So essentially the remainder of this uh, semester, you will be graded on two things. First of all is knowledge checks based on the conversations or information in the videos. Second thing is on your willingness and enthusiasm in updating the websites to personalize them to yourself. We're going to learn about different technologies. We're going to learn about how this website that we've created to this point, how to make it more efficient, easier to update. And through doing that, we'll understand concepts and fundamentals that it takes to make any IT project happen. We're we'll learning things about that are applicable to us as developers, as clients, as business professionals, necessity to understanding what it takes to participate in a professional development project. We'll explore the technologies that make those projects possible. Just overall, uh, take our websites to the next level through technology that I have learned through 20 plus years of being in this industry. The way that you have been building the HTML version of the inside out website is how I started learning. When I started learning websites, when I started learning how to create web pages, I was dialing in on AOL at 14K and there were no websites to pull information from. It was all books. It was all trial and error. And today we have so many opportunities to learn and be smart. And we're going to learn how to leverage some of those opportunities so those of you who end up in leadership positions are able to manage expectations not only of yourself, but those around you. And also be able to approach vendors who would be involved in IT projects that would be making contributions through website development that you would be mindful of some of the things that they were saying to you and understand the efforts 
required to complete such projects, but don't let a vendor advantage of uh, your position in making a decision. With that said, we're gonna go ahead. This is where we were with our project 12, making our bookmarkers. And what we're going to do is we're gonna move into our websites page. In our websites page, we're going to introduce some new technology. Um, we're gonna talk about it and uh, we're gonna learn some, some about it. It's included in the lesson and we're gonna learn what Bootstrap is and what jQuery is and how that makes our lives better and how that positions development to be more rapid and more efficient with increased delivery times. So in this project, we're going to come in, we're going to copy the website HTML updates after we make our number 13 folder. We're going to paste it in there and then we're going to walk through the code and discuss it. Your objective is going to be to change the six websites and images, accompanied Im images that I have provided in the website as well as the quote. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the way that we're going to get started is we are going to make sure that we have our information. Uh, you should have gathered information. If you don't choose to do it this way, it'll take you twice as long. Therefore, I don't grade you, include that in the grading. It's, it's up to you to do things efficiently. It's what's going to make the difference uh, in the end for you as a professional when you get into the world. So you should always be looking for opportunities to do things not only more efficiently, but also do them in a way um, that you are prone to make less errors. Errors cost a lot of money, cost a lot of time. So you can see in preparation, I went ahead and got my six websites together along with the images. I have the images available. Um, uh, the way we're going to start off is we'll go to brackets. Uh, if you were working step 12 last, uh, that's where you'll be. So what we want to do is go ahead and say open folder and take our step 12 folder, copy it. Rename it, step 13, awesome. So we'll double click on that and we'll say select folder. And now we're inside of step 13 and we have our whole folder open here. We have assets, uh, let's go ahead, let's go into images and inside our image, images folder, let's go ahead and say new folder and call it websites so now we can take that websites folder right click on it and say show and explore and I'm just gonna go ahead and take the pictures that I gathered already brought together and drag them right into that folder and now my images are ready for me to use and I'm ready to go ahead and start working on my websites page I'll close the images folder, get that out of the way, and let's go open up our websites page. We see that we have that open. Anytime we're working in the, uh, the file like this with a big header or a big chunk of code that we don't need to see, of course, we're going to collapse it. And this is the area that we're going to be working in. Um, as we're working, we'll use live preview. And when we click on that, it'll open a browser window for us and it's gonna to load the page that we're working on. And to show you where this is really beneficial, I'm gonna drag it over so you can just see the end of goes here. And you can see when I actually select on it, it selects on it in the code as well. And when I come in here, if I start typing, we can see it goes right along with it and, and just keeps right up with us on what we're doing. So, uh, as promised, the way that this lesson is going to go, we're going to focus more on learning about what's being used, how it's being used, and things of that nature. And we're going to uh, not worry so much about uh, being great coders, because as we're working inside of the code, uh, that should be um, exposing you to different ideas, and um, you now have an idea of what you're looking at in the code, which makes it more enjoyable. Let's go out. Um, so in the change log, we specify that we're going to add our image files and that we're going to create that folder. So that step is done. 
Now what we want to do is expand the website HTML updates and we're just going to go ahead uh, click inside that iframe. This is an iframe. We learned about them and copy that code. Go over to brackets. Oh, select all in our website page and paste it. And what we'll see when we go to live preview now is that we have that completed page in here so we can talk about it. Um, the, the images will not be showing for you. That's fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, you'll replace the text, the title, the image, and the link uh, in the code. And, and we'll review that a little bit as we're going, as well as put a, a quote in and um, the quote author. So at this point, let's go ahead and let's talk about what it is that we're creating. Uh, the interesting thing is we're leveraging something new called Bootstrap and jQuery, and we're focusing on, on leveraging it. And So let's take a moment and let's talk about what they are. Um, Bootstrap and jQuery are considered libraries or frameworks. Some people might call them frameworks. It depends on who you're talking to, what, uh, what they're going to call it. But what they really are is big pieces, big chunks of code that allow us to use uh, the code with one line versus writing 50 lines of code. One of the things that we've learned as developers over the years is that we write and rewrite and rewrite a lot of the same stuff, which makes absolutely no sense. And so these frameworks and libraries started emerging out of nowhere. And basically, for example, if we were going to write, uh, make a table with a bunch of rows in it, it's silly to just keep building that table over and over and over again when we could just feed a couple lines of code in and tell it to create it for us. Um, so with Bootstrap, what Bootstrap does for us is it allows us, it puts us in a, a, a great place as web developers because what it does is it allows us to take that web page and break it up and you'll see we're using in the code, you'll, you'll actually see some of the things that we're looking at here. Um, column, right? Column medium four, column small four. And what this is doing is it's taking those classes and it's setting our page up in a more structured way so that we're able to deliver the best presentation possible quickly. And so you can see here, uh, column four is showing us column four, it's showing us small, um, medium, large, and you can see what's happening to the columns. It's actually showing you, and this is called responsive, they're either collapsing or compiling on top of each other. Column four, just with nothing, is basically saying, hey, you need to just maintain um, the columns. Small is saying when you're smaller, and then medium, and so on and so forth, and you see the columns just expanding. It's a great concept. It's a big help because one of the hardest things in web design has been laying out the web pages. One of the beautiful parts about this, it allows a developer to get done in a day what might have taken a week only a couple years ago. Other things that Bootstrap does for us that's pretty exciting and is it provides us with um, opportunities to quickly build things that we might need. Let's say we need a splash page. We can actually just click on there and right there is a splash page that we can use to get going with Bootstrap right away with all the pre-built, uh, everything in it that we need and um, a nice presentation. We have the nav bar. This allows us, these are different nav bars, but this allows us to create different nav bars quickly. Uh, this one probably looks familiar from your homework. I use Bootstrap in homework as well. Um, let's look at one more example. Uh, we'll be playing a lot with Bootstrap as we move forward. But here's a great example. Let's say you're going to build a dashboard and you need to get it done quickly. Well, right out of the gate, right here, Bootstrap delivers us with some pre-existing structure for a dashboard that we can just actually start to build onto and leverage in our coding efforts. So Bootstrap is more about the CSS. It has some JavaScript included. It does some really cool things, positions us for what we call rapid development. 
Bootstrap is not dependent on, but heavily uses JavaScript library called jQuery. jQuery is really cool. jQuery allows us to basically write 200 lines of code with one line. What do I mean by that? Well, let's, uh, for example, let's look in our jQuery UI section and let's just look at something simple like an accordion, right? So an accordion, we can actually just come in and we can tell it to make an accordion um, and not have to worry about writing all the code it takes to make that do that or even resize this box. Um, not having to rewrite all that code is, is amazing. It's a great uh, thing. Years ago, it would have taken um, maybe an hour or two to write this, and now it takes a matter of inside a minute. Um, we can look at things like you know progress bars, and what does that mean to us? Well, that looks kind of simple, but maybe if we take a look at this one and say, this is all pre-written code that we can just hook, we call it hooking our code into jQuery does a lot more than layout and UI. It has built-in effects where we actually can apply effects to our site. It has several different effects that we can choose from, which are really great. Uh, it helps enhance the user experience um, and allows us to make our sites more interesting. So we'll talk more about jQuery as we move along as well. Um, we'll be leveraging it throughout the course. And as a matter of fact, in our next, our lesson 14, step 14, we are going to do our timelines in HTML and we're going to lever, leverage a whole lot of jQuery and bootstrap to get that done. So in, in our website, in our web page that we're building now, um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the code and see what's going on here. Initially in lesson 15, while I'm getting myself up here to close down the header, we're going to take this header and we're going to learn about PHP. And we're actually going to put this header in one place and just call it in um, every time that we have a page view. More to come on that. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. First of all, I want to go ahead and open up a preview so that we can see a couple things that we're doing. First, uh, first thing that would probably be most interesting to see is what are these libraries doing for us? How are they uh, really doing something for us? How are they making things happen? Well, the best way to, to understand that is to actually just come in and close out the library. So we, for Bootstrap, we have a CSS at the top, which I'm, you can see immediately, it's already affected the way that our website looks. And so if I undo that, and we look down here, we're back to where we were. So you can see right there that that library is doing a whole lot. And the reason it's doing a, a whole lot is because we're actually leveraging. We, we saw that little column sheet. We're actually using breaking our page up into columns, managing it, making it do different um, layout things for us so that we're able to manage how that information is displayed. Additionally, that circle effect that's on the, on, on the, uh, the image as well. If I if I do that again, you'll see that that uh, circle effect is completely gone. You can see that we lost the circle effect on the images. Um, and like I said, we lost the columns as well. So if I come in and I undo that, you can see everything hopped right back into place. So that's the bootstrap. If we go all the way down to the bottom of the page, we'll see we're actually pulling in jQuery and we're pulling in Bootstrap's uh, JavaScript as well. JavaScript, uh, for the most part, unless it's absolutely necessary, we put it in the bottom of the page. And the reason that we do that is because we don't want it to slow our page down from loading for our user. And so JavaScript usually is kicked off at the end of a page load anyway. So we call in the JavaScript in the end so that the rest of the page can load nicely and we can see exactly what's going on with our page. So let's take a look at our website and let's see exactly what we're doing. 
first thing we're doing is we're, we're building out um, inside our section we're putting a container and we're putting that container because we want to just hold everything that we're putting in there in one in one place that we can manage it move it around do whatever it is we need to do with it treat it like it, it's 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 its own entity and then we're breaking our page up into rows there's a row which has our quote in it there's a row which has our first row of websites and there's a row so if you look you can actually see the three rows first row second row third row I'll scroll back up we have our quote we've seen that we what your job is is to replace this quote and author that's part of your homework um, and with the quote, what's interesting about it, what we're doing is we're, we're using what we call an offset. So we're telling it. So the way that Bootstrap works by default is it recognizes that it has 12 columns in a row, has 12 boxes across to break information up. And what we're doing is we're telling it to take this div quote to take eight columns and then offset two. So eight to 10 and then two. So basically what it's doing is it's treating the first two left uh, columns as space. It's putting the content inside the middle eight columns and then the right two columns is also uh, acting as, as space, as a buffer. So don't forget to update your quote, get your quote in there, your information in there. And then we're going to begin our website listings. Each, uh, as I said, we have 12 columns, so it's broken. Each row is broken up into four for each. And then inside that, we're placing our image, our H3, um, our heading tag, our content, basically just our information about the page, and then our link. Make sure when you're putting your link in that you're using, well, you, you will because you're copying and pasting, but you'll notice we're doing a target a blank. What does a target a blank do? When you use a target of blank, what it does is it opens the link in a new tab or a new window, leaving yours open so that the person is not leaving necessarily leaving your website. They're just going to another one briefly and returning to yours. You want to make sure that you do not push people out of your website. Or if you do have to have them leave your website, you do it in a way that your website stays open and the external one opens in a new tab or window. Really important. And we do that using target blank attribute value, right? Target blank. We're doing that for all uh, six of them. Make sure that you've updated your images. Make sure that you have your information in. Make sure that the links work. And um, take a minute to try to wrap your head around. And we're going to discuss it more and more as we move forward. The, uh, the use of columns by Bootstrap and um, recognize how important that is to us. Without this, uh, we would end up having to write a, a lot of CSS to try to make it look the way that it does, appear as nicely as it does, and uh, handle itself. And then lastly, as we saw in the example on Bootstrap site, the other thing that we're starting to do is we're starting to learn about responsive. And what we're starting to learn about responsive is um, why it's important and what it does for us. So quickly, if we look in our page, uh, we have a whole lot of code, we have a whole lot going on, and we need the browser to recognize whether it's on a phone or whether it's on a desktop or whatever it might be on, we need it to recognize what it's on. So what's nice with Bootstrap is it automatically makes us responsive. And when I say responsive, what I mean is if I open this up, you just saw them hop there a little bit. They spread further apart. When I come in, they pull a little bit closer together. So this might be a smaller monitor. And then as I close the window, they close in even more. So this would potentially be a tablet or something of that nature. And as I continue to go in, you see there's a point where they just break into a, a single column and they list themselves nicely. And of course, that would be for a phone. We'll be taking care of these things as far as that goes as well now that we're starting to incorporate Bootstrap into our site. So for now, that's this lesson. 
and uh, make sure that you are careful with the code. Uh, remember, even though you're not writing all the code, you are um, updating it, you're looking at it, pay attention to it like you're writing it, otherwise you will make a lot of mistakes. So in our next lesson, I'm excited, we're going to go ahead and continue to use Bootstrap and jQuery, and we're going to update, uh, create timelines in our who I was then, am now, and will be pages. Until then, See you next time.